Welcome to Educounting, where we're passionate about financial education. This video is on international tax avoidance. Moving to a tax haven is nothing new. Over the last 30 years, from 1982 to 2012, approximately one company per year reincorporated in a low-tax jurisdiction as one strategy to lower taxes. However, since 2012, that number jumped five times, showing the value companies can create by managing taxes internationally. There are two basic strategies. One, move expenses or deductions into jurisdictions with higher taxes, or two, move income to jurisdictions with lower taxes. Apple is being asked to pay taxes of $14.5 billion for an international tax scheme. Let's do a simple example of a trading company and show how this could happen. First, you need a country that wants you. If you are a significant business with jobs, you can negotiate your rate really, really low. Here comes Ireland. Next, you want to protect yourself, so you get a comfort letter. That's like a get out of jail free card if anyone comes looking for issues. Now, you start your business. Let's assume you produce an electronic device for $102 in China. You sell it to your Irish sales office for $110. Your Chinese affiliate will then recognize a profit of $8 and will pay Chinese taxes of 25% or $2. Next, Ireland sells that electronic device to a customer in France for $510. That means $400 of profit in Ireland. You pay the really low negotiated rate of 0.05% or 20 cents. So on a total of $408 of profit, you pay $2.20 or approximately 0.5%. You can also move around expenses for beneficial tax treatment as well. France doesn't like it and neither does Germany because no taxes were paid in either country. So, you'll probably see some other countries come after Apple as well. Since the IRS doesn't want to double tax companies, and if taxes are collected, the U.S. taxpayer will carry the burden because Apple will get a credit for taxes paid to foreign countries. Yuck! Here's to better decisions based on better data and better education.